My name is Ilya Selman. I'm an associate professor at George Mason Law School in Virginia, uh, in your Washington, D.C. Uh, in terms of how this paper came about, John McGinnis, who's here at Northwestern and I, we have for two or three years been doing a project on the problem that much of what passes as international law is generated through very undemocratic processes, that uh, there's really not much of an insurance that the people who generate this law ha have much of an incentive to make good norms, particularly norms that will be good in comparison to what uh, domestic democratic processes create. Uh, and so we wanted to apply some of our more general insights about this to the particular problem of deciding what sorts of lawsuits should be allowed to go ahead under the ATS on the grounds that these lawsuits were somehow based in customary international law. And we suggest that unless the range of sources that can be used in such lawsuits is limited, that you might well get ATS lawsuits that end up imposing very harmful norms on uh, particular developing countries. Uh, to our mind, there's at least two specific risks uh, that might occur if you allow a very wide range of causes of action to go forward. Uh, one is you might upset deals that are created between the democratic opposition and a dictatorial regime that is on its way out, deals under which that regime leaves power and ends its human rights violations and other abusive behavior, but in exchange uh, those regime officials uh, are given exemption from liability for their previous crimes. Uh, and if these sorts of deals are upset, then uh, that might cause serious harm. The rulers will stay in power longer and commit more abuses. Secondly, with respect to lawsuits against corporations, there is a danger that if too many of these suits are allowed to go forward, corporations might be deterred from investing in various parts of the third world, which could cause terrible harm to uh, people for whom this is their best possible source of livelihood, very poor workers in these countries. Obviously, there is a strong movement in international law circles to define international law very broadly and allow a wide range of cause of action, and without stronger quality control over these norms, there is, I think, a real danger in various areas of law that uh, we could impose rules on people which uh, really cause much more harm than good. Thank <music> you.